Hey, in today's video, I'm gonna share eight practical and what I consider uh, game-changing tips for working with color. I'll help you create travel photos that convey your stories and your emotions more effectively. Photos that are more powerful. Hey, I'm Mitchell. For the past decade, I've been living my dream, journeying around the world as a professional travel photographer. During this time, I've seen and I've learned a lot. And now I want to share the knowledge with you. Come along on the journey. In photography, color is as much a part of visual communication as composition and light. Color is probably the main factor responsible for the emotional impact of your photos. It can also be leveraged to communicate your stories more clearly. Despite all of this, color rarely gets discussed much creatively, especially in travel and documentary photography. If you want to create powerful color travel photos, you need to understand color and to be intentional in your approach to it. This applies to the time of the shoot and to the post-processing stages. So, to the tips. Tip number one, be aware of the associations that different colors have. Bright, vivid, warm colors are generally associated with sunrises, sunsets, happiness, high energy, positivity. Grays, dull, subdued colors, these evoke overcast, rainy or foggy days. So there's a sense of melancholy or even sadness. Greens are associated with vegetation and evoke fertility, vitality, life. Blues are the sky, twilight, water, freshness, coolness. Earthy colors are about nature, balance, and can be pretty neutral as far as mood. Really dark colors are the night, the unknown, mystique and mystery. Whenever colors are deep and intense, usually due to light, they can make a scene feel quite dramatic. These associations come from nature. I'm sure you can think of more, I've just mentioned ones that jump out immediately. There are different associations and meanings that are culture related, but with those you always run the risk that they won't be understood outside of that culture. That's why I always prefer to stick to the ones that are nature related. Tip number two, look at everything around you in terms of color. Here I have shades of bright orange, and dark browns and yellows, red, blacks, greys, and a bit of white. I'll often see a scene as a collection of colors before I see anything else in it. Of course, it is important to understand, to be aware of what subject you're photographing, but when you're making color photos, the color of the subject is almost equally important to how the image will be perceived, to what mood it will evoke. In practical terms, my thought process goes a little something like this. I see a dark shade of green, aqua, deep blacks, a pattern of multiple colors, associations with vitality, energy, and life come to mind. It all works because the colors reflect the energy of the street life of this town. I just had to wait for everything to align compositionally. Often I don't know if the image as a whole will work, but the colors make me feel something. I'll always experiment in those cases to see what I can come up with. Tip number three, understand and leverage the impact of light on color. Light and color are really important to photography, but I know that often these topics are made much more complex than they should be. That's why I've made this video. It's also why I created my travel photography course. It covers the topics of light and color, but in more detail than I can do here on YouTube. If you aren't confident about your understanding of light and color, take a look at the course, follow the link. It's a huge Christmas special, the lowest price drop I've had, and only a few days left to take advantage of it. Go into the new year with some new photography skills. Colors look different in different types of light. Watching a time-lapse like this 
is a great way to see just how much the same colors change under natural light. Artificial light, light bulbs, candles, all of these have their own effect on color. Understand the impact of different kinds of light on color. And if you've already grasped the different meanings and associations that colors can have, then you can leverage light to communicate more effectively. Tip number four, aim for uniformity of color for a stronger emotional direction. By uniformity, I mean colors that are similar to each other, like different shades of blue, yellow, orange, and so on. Every color within the frame can play a role in creating or breaking the mood. But it's the colors that dominate the frame that are responsible for the overall mood of the image. And overall uniformity within the dominant colors equals a clearer, stronger sense of mood. It's not too often that you'll get a color palette of shades of pretty much just one color. But it is fairly common to find a scene dominated by a couple of colors or a combination of earthy colors, greens and a blue sky, like here. A contrasting color amidst a uniform color palette will instantly draw attention, even if that element is pretty small, like here. The contrasting color can change the mood of the entire photo. This can be used creatively and I'll talk more about it in tip number seven. Tip number five, pick and choose. Continuing on the idea of uniformity of color, how do you limit the colors in a scene to be uniform? It begins with recognizing situations with potential. You might see a group of people dressed in very limited colors, or you could encounter a limited color palette in nature. Invest your time and energy into scenes with potential, like these ones. The main way in which you control color in travel and documentary photography is through choosing what to include into the frame and what to exclude. Tip number six, keep in mind the concept of visual weight. I talk about the idea of visual weight pretty often. It's a more fluid way of looking at composition. The main premise is that in each photograph, some elements will grab more of our attention than others, or they'll be more visually heavy. In regards to color, bright, vivid colors will generally be more visually heavy than others. But even more important is the interrelation of colors within the frame. Remember I told you that adding a contrasting color to a mostly uniform color palette can change the mood of the photograph? and that it can be used creatively? Well, here are a couple of examples. Uniform color palette here. The man has some visual weight, but he doesn't jump out and change the mood of the photo. More or less the same framing here, but this one is bright and vivid and does jump out immediately. She's really visually heavy and turns a fairly calm scene into a much more dynamic one filled with energy and life. Here is a different example. The palette is dominated by blues. It's pretty dark and cool. A somewhat mysterious feel reflected of the morning in this particular area. I liked that. That's what I wanted to communicate. But these containers, they're bright, yellow. They really stand out and they break up what I was going for. So I chose just one of the girls to focus on and I came in closer. I framed out the yellow containers. Again, that idea of picking and choosing. You keep any visually heavy elements that don't have a purpose out of the frame. Tip number seven, create a visual hierarchy of color through post-processing. There is another way of dealing with unnecessarily visually heavy elements in a photograph. It's done with post-processing. I'll show you. The main subject or a character here is the young woman the produce seller. The rest of what's in the frame you can say is supporting cast. Nothing should take much attention away from her. But it was a messy environment and these sacks here in particular are bright. They become really visually heavy. So I subdued them by making them a bit darker and more dull. 
I also brightened the woman's face and the scarf a little bit to make her more visually heavy. Here you go, before and after. Before and after. Ideally, you should have a sort of a visual hierarchy. Everything that's important to what you're communicating should be brighter, more vivid, more visually heavy. And everything that's not as important, more subdued, less vivid, less visually heavy. You should try to take care of this as much as possible while framing the photo, but sometimes you can't. And in those cases, you turn to post-processing. A word of caution though, if you're aiming for any sort of realistic representation, especially if you're more on the documentary side, then try to use post-processing to only tweak rather than to completely transform colors. Another quick plug for my travel photography course, there are many more examples like these ones inside. In fact, I show you everything I do in post-processing to create color hierarchies, step by step. You even get the raw files to follow along. Okay, back to the video. Tip number eight, add mood with a tint in post-processing. In the very first tip, I mentioned that we have different associations with different colors. Keeping this in mind, think about how you can make any scene in a photo cooler or warmer or more neutral. You can change the feel or the mood. You're seeing some examples right here. There's a lot of potential for completely altering the mood with only one adjustment of the temperature slider. Again, you'll need to decide whether you're aiming for realism. Because it's easy to go overboard with this adjustment, subtlety is key. So those are the eight practical tips for working with color for travel and documentary photographers. Since they are practical, I encourage you to use them right away, like the next time you're out shooting. Don't miss out on the Christmas special. We're already halfway through. Remember, the last video is coming on Sunday. Make sure you don't miss out on that. Subscribe, click the little bell and all that sort of stuff. I think it's time for me to go for a swim. See you Sunday.